everyone, Jess here from the Scrappy Sisters. So in this video, I am making some embellished pinwheels. So I've just pulled out some scraps of my pattern paper and I'm looking at just their full 12 inch strips. And I'm just, uh, I'll probably cut down the width a little bit depending on the pinwheel I make. So at the moment, I'm thinking I'm gonna layer two bits of paper together for these pinwheels. So I'm just matching up some papers that I think look nice together. But lots of these I actually do end up changing. So I'm glad I layered them together just to uh, change them up a bit. So I've just pulled another piece. I felt like I needed a plainer piece to go with some of the more intense patterns. So here we are. I have pulled my first two bits and I've got out these um, knockout punches, um, edge punches from American Crafts. I've only just received these uh, from my sister. I don't know how long she's had them in her stash, but I only just got them, this is my first time using them. I only just got them within the week. So if you've never seen this before, this is an edge punch. And so you put those two little um, picture pieces on each side of the edge punch to show you how, uh, how the pattern is going and how to line up the pattern as you slide your piece of paper all the way along because the punch itself only works in that center piece. So you put your first bit in and you give it a big push. It is a bit of a, a hard one. And then you line up what's just been punched with the picture that's out on your left or out on your right, depending on which way you like to use the punch. And then if you keep lining that up as you go, you can sort of see me there trying to line up with the picture. Oh, I've got a bit stuck. Um, you'll end up with this beautiful patterned edge along the line of your paper there, which you can sort of start to see. So you do lose a bit of um, width of your paper. So if you sort of had measured exactly and didn't take into consideration how much you'd lose cutting off your edge, um, add on at least maybe a quarter of an inch just to make sure you don't lose the width you needed. Now I am going to score my um, pinwheel papers. So I do actually change the way I do this later on in a video, but for now I'm just going to show you the way I score because I don't have a scoring board. I just use the lid of a biro because it's not sharp and score using the... Um, score marks, the measurement marks that are inside my Fiskars trimmer. And I just run my biro down the little gullies that they create. Now the bit that I end up changing, so I still score in the same um, manner using a biro and using my uh, Fiskars trimmer. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word for that. But what I end up doing is I don't end up doing the two pieces separately. I actually end up gluing them together and scoring them as one whole piece because the I want to put a score mark in between each of the little um, dips in the scallops of the edge. And of course, it doesn't line up perfectly with my scoring marks on my trimmer. So I have to keep moving it a little bit. And so moving the black piece with the edge mark with the scallop itself is easy. But moving the white piece so it lines up and matches is actually really, really difficult. So the next time I will pre-glue those together and score them as one whole sheet. So once I've scored all the way along those, I then um, bifold, bifold, fold. Did you say the word fold twice? I bifold those um, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, or um, I don't know how I should explain that, sorry, um, on both of the sheets of paper. And again, this is again the error that I found when I made these the first time. This just makes sticking them together later all that bit harder. So I definitely recommend putting these together before you do anything else. But anywho, I do do that later on in one of my videos. So I then have a look and I work out very quickly that that piece that I'm trying to turn into a pinwheel there is far too big. It'll be the biggest pinwheel in history. So I will be trimming that down. Um, but otherwise, it's looking cute. So again, another problem I run into is I then want to put that big piece into my trimmer and cut it down. And of course, it's already been folded. So how do I make sure I cut it straight when it's already a wiggly zigzag piece of paper? So again, I'm showing you this in its, in its um, 
entirety just as ways to see the errors I made when I was creating this. I was in too much of a hurry and too excited to get the pinwheel done. I didn't think through the process properly. So learn from my mistakes people when you make these and make sure that you um, do it the easy way that will actually save you time in the long run as opposed to the way that I have done it. So that is how they're going to look together which is super cute so it actually it, it totally works and there's nothing wrong but I've just done this the hard way so now I'm just putting a strip of PVA glue all the way along this is a wet glue so it will need time to dry but it's just standard paper craft PVA glue um, nothing special so I'm now joining these two papers together but I'm trying to make sure that the fold lines marry up with each other because I've gone to all that trouble to score and fold them that I want them to sit nicely within each other and then I pop that aside to dry and move on to the next one so I am going to change out my punch so I take the punch piece out and I take out the two little um, picture plates and pop those back there is a right way and a wrong way for these picture plates, not in the packaging, but when you put them on your um, punch punching tool, there's um, a little diagonal cut out of one of the corners. So that just makes sure you put it in the correct side, first of all. And then that tells you as well which way the punch itself goes. So this one is super cute. This is a little love heart one. And then my very first punch, it didn't punch all the way to the edge. So again, I just lined up the pictures and just punched away. And it's really simple if you line up the pictures properly. So there we go. It is done. So I'm working out which green piece I want to match this red love heart to. And there, see, gluing it onto that piece of paper first definitely a good idea so gluing that on and then um, I'll leave that to dry and move on to the next one now this punch is a little bit different so I kept this one in just to show you how this punch works um, obviously I can just use it as a normal edge punch and put that cool zigzag in but if I put it back in the other way it turns it into a bit like um, What's that called? Riff raff? Rick Rick Rack. Or anyway, a zigzag line. So it's one it's one um, thin piece of paper that is zigzaggy all the way along, which I thought was really really cute. And I chose to do that with two bits of paper. So now I'm doing it back through on the other side of this white speckledy piece of paper. Um, you do have to be careful. This white one I I cut a little bit off in terms of the zigzags matching up, but you don't notice too badly. And so I'm going to glue those down onto this black bauble piece. So you should be able to see it a little bit better. So there's the white one. And it really covers up most of the black bauble piece, but I like the effect it has. And then here's the green spotty one. And it's, this one's a lot, I did this on purple, it's a lot purpose. It's a lot thinner than the white one. I like the effect of having different sized. And I would have liked to do a third one, but um, I didn't want the pinwheel to be too large. And I end up changing up this one anyway, later on in the video. So then I pulled out my diamond press. I do have a big shot, but the diamond press is just super easy and I can just keep it on my desk. So I didn't pull out the big shot for this. I want to cut two circles one for the front of the pinwheel and one for the back of the pinwheel now I don't need to use pattern paper for the back of the pinwheel as you don't really see it but I've got heaps of scraps from a different one of my advent calendar projects so I'm just using them up so I do put through um, I put through the two circles at the same time one piece of oh, the two pieces of paper at the same time and I'm pulling out my hot glue gun to make the pinwheels I do find because they're a bit springy, oh, I didn't put it through at the same time. I do later on, I find um, it's obviously quicker to put two bits of paper together through at once. And then it cuts perfectly fine, no drama. So that just makes life a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. So as I said, I use my hot glue gun for the middle circles. I'm just trying to pick what color pattern paper I want for the different pinwheels. Um, I do find that the pinwheels are springy, as, as you would hope that they are, 
but so it can be a little bit difficult to get them to stick down. So I definitely find my hot glue gun is my best choice when it comes to making the pinwheels because I can, it, obviously it dries really quickly. I can hold it in place and that will help to um, set it quickly and help me know if I've, if I've used enough glue, if I've put the glue in the correct spot and all of those things. So once I fold them up, I then use double-sided tape to seal them around into a circle. Um, seal up the, the side. And I try to make sure that the side is um, joined underneath. So you can't see the raw edge sticking on the top on the outside, if that makes sense. Now I mentioned earlier that I would have liked that one, that pinwheel to be, have a third of the zigzag strips but I didn't want the pinwheel to be too large so what I ended up doing was actually cutting the edge of the pinwheel to be um, zigzag as well just to follow the line of that green one. Now I still decided the pinwheel was too big I'm really conscious of these not being humongous they'll be really hard to to use um, for anything a scrapbooking layout for happy mail for decorating the packaging of your Christmas presents if they're too big Obviously, if the Christmas present is big, then that's okay. But sort of normal size things, you want it to be that bit smaller. So I'm really conscious of these not being humongous. So I know that this is a little bit long and I know that my voiceover has been jumping everywhere to everywhere to everywhere as the video moves. But hopefully you're able to follow this along a little bit and understand sort of the troubleshooting, I guess, tips and tricks that I'm giving you because that is the area these are the errors that I came across as I was making my pinwheels. So here I am ready to um, hot glue gun this pinwheel. So I've pushed it all down together. And it did take me a little bit of time again to perfect the perfect um, order to, to put these down. Because I found that I fiddled around quite a bit as you can see here getting my pinwheel flat. And then by the time I was ready to put that circle on the hot glue had dried a little bit so it does take a little bit of getting used to if you've not made these before as I have um, pretty new at them this is only my second time so um, yeah I do improve my strategy of that now I've skipped to the end because the video got quite long and it was quite repetitive just me sticking down the circles and I've now since um, chosen a few embellishments to put in the middle of my pinwheels. Um, some of them are a little bit big, so I'm just cutting them down. You can also see while I fussy cut this um, present out that some of my pinwheels have some sort of green and red circle uh, organza behind them. I use those for another project that is in my advent calendar series. And these were just extra ones that I'd ac I, I miscounted and cut too many, which is such a problem to have. So I have included those on the pinwheels because they just looked really cute and they were a really cute size. So I'm just going to put on this ephemera using my hot glue gun again. And then these will be almost finished. So I just, as I said, popped them on using the hot glue gun, um, some in the middle, some a bit off centre. Uh, just a little bit of everywhere and I'm really happy with the way these are looking. I hope Katie will be able to find a use for them. They are a little bit large um, for scrapbooking layouts probably but she should hopefully be able to use them um, maybe for embellishing gift wraps, uh, gift presents, gift presents, hmm, it's the same word twice, or for um, you know happy mail or something like that anyway hopefully she likes them i think they're really cute so hopefully she can find a use for them uh, so just blinging them up with a little bit of gold bling i find that if there was any gold foiling on some of them they t it tended to be gold so i just popped a gold bling on each one and then i also popped a little black bling on each one as well because a lot of them not all of them but a lot of them had black elements and it was just quick and easy to keep all of the bling the same color I didn't have to f dig through my box because just another in my topic uh, totally random topic that is in my head all of my diamantes and enamel dots are in that blue box you could see in the top left hand corner and it is awful way to store them 
especially if they're not in their original packaging because they all fall apart and fall out and go everywhere. So I do need a new way of storing those, but I can't with the ones I've already opened. I only can with new ones. Anyway, totally off topic, but just thought I'd share my thoughts on that. What I'm thinking is when I get new packets to put them on a ring binder. I think that's the better way to go. So here they are finished. There's quite a few different ones. Just showing you the back here, um, just how I put that organza on, uh, just so you could see it was all sort of sealed in together with the circle on the back. Some of them I put the circle pattern side out. Some of them I put the circle pattern side in, so it's just a white spot on the back. Really doesn't matter if she if Katie attaches it to something, you won't see the back at all anyway. So here they are. There are a few stills, not too many. But hopefully these inspire you. Obviously they can be adapted to any season or no season just for general um, paper crafting supplies. But they were really fun. Um, I loved using my border punch which I'd never used before. That was really cute. I can definitely see I will use that again. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for another video tomorrow.